one of the set texts for this term is also spake Zarathustra, or thus spoke Zarathustra, by um, Friedrich Nietzsche. It's a very, very difficult book, uh, hard to understand and quite intimidating. So I thought I'd make a few observations to uh, help us all on our way. Um, this is not a simple, straightforward, realist novel like Emil Zola, uh, who we were reading earlier on. It's much more like James Joyce, very fragmented, um, a sort of book that really you can pick up and dip into uh, each chapter. Nietzsche himself, in his other writings, described it as a well that you could go and dip into this book from time to time, get something out of it. And that's really the best way to use it. Um, it consists of these somewhat disjointed um, parables, because uh, part of the style, it's rather like the Bible. It's like, a, it's like creating a dense religious text. Now, overall, it has meta-meanings that can be derived and if you read the textbook, Bertrand Russell on Nietzsche, um, Russell talks about some of these themes and theories that are in Zarathustra in the context of Nietzsche's work as a whole. Bertrand Russell, of course, is very hostile uh, to Friedrich Nietzsche. Uh, and perhaps we can get into that. But in this talk, I want to stay pretty close to the text of um, Zarathustra. Uh, and try and point you towards uh, some of its meaning and some of its importance. Astra was an ancient Persian uh, religious figure, the founder of the Zoroastrian religion. Uh, it's now virtually extinct. Um, there's probably a few hundred thousand Zoroastrians they mainly live now in India, where they're known as the Farsis, Farsi being the, the word for the Iranian language, because uh, Zoroaster originally came from Iran. Um, the Farsis are mainly known for their funeral rites, which involves leaving the dead body on top of a huge pillar uh, so that birds can come and uh, pick the corpse. Anyway. Zoroaster was a real historical figure as far as we can tell, uh, and he founded the religion of Zoroastrianism. Uh, the, the, the central point about Zoroastrianism is it divides the universe into a duality of good and evil. That the, There is a dialectic of history in Zoroastrianism um, of an epic battle between the forces of good uh, and the forces of evil. Uh, and uh, Nietzsche is very, very interested in that. He's partly interested in it because it's an extinct religion, and it's, an, it's a religion from the 6th century BC, so it's very old. It predates Christianity by, well, in, in Nietzsche's terms, because Nietzsche doesn't date Christianity from, from Jesus necessarily, so it's, a, it, it's almost a thousand years older than Christianity. Um, but also, importantly for Nietzsche, Zoroaster and Zoroastrianism was before Socrates. It was before the ancient Greeks. It was, it was contemporary with the, with the very early days of, of the Greeks. Uh, and its religious system of Zoroastrianism was settled uh, long before um, the age in which Socrates was, was teaching. And this is very significant. The Nietzsche is full of hate. He thinks that hate is a good thing. He thinks it's a powerful, honest emotion. And he hates many, many things. Uh, one of which is Christianity. Another of which is Socrates. Uh, in Zarathustra, you will see the chapter there on the hour of the great contempt. He says the, the greatest thing in life the speak Zarathustra, according to Zarathustra, is when you're hating, when you when you when you um, embrace what he calls the great contempt. Um, this is the the most enjoyable thing. Uh, and I have to say, as a football fan, uh, I think that's true. When I go and watch my team, I'm not particularly 
interested in them winning. I'm more interested in hating the people there again. So I, I think that there's a, you know, the psychology of Nietzsche is very true. Um, but you can't say that kind of thing in polite Christian society where all hate is bad and all love is good. Uh, one of Nietzsche's points is he wants to reverse that. He thinks love, compassion, softness, gentleness, these kind of things that in our Christian culture and our Socratic culture are held up to be great, are in fact bad things. Um, they are a source of war, uh, of doom, of all kinds of problems. And we need to get back to a realisation that contempt uh, for mediocrity, contempt for injustice, contempt for mental sloth are bad things which need to be uh, struggled against. So it's relatively easy to see that Nietzsche would be against uh, Christianity which, by the way, he sees as simply a, a, a sub-cult of Judaism, uh, because at the centre of Christianity, his principal doctrine really is love your enemy, turn the other cheek, suffering is good in this world, um, the reward is in the next world, you should deny the pleasures of the flesh. You, he thinks of it, he calls um, thinly disguised in, in Zarathustra, it's what he calls the preachers of death. And these are Christians, that they, uh, they're they obsessed with dying. They want to die. Christianity is a religion where you aim to die. Uh, you deny the natural impulses of, of life. Um, but why is he against uh, Socrates? Uh, this is slightly more obscure because I... I suppose students will be less familiar with uh, the ancient Greeks than they are with um, Christianity. Uh, now, but most people will have heard of Socrates and the Socratic method, which is constant questioning of uh, any knowledge, a kind of all-pervading scepticism. Uh, Socrates famously says, the more I learn, the less I know. There are more questions than answers, and that it's really impossible to know anything in this world. Um, in Socrates' dialogues, uh, recorded by Plato, Plato goes on to construct a whole world of uh, uh, a kind of afterlife, uh, an eternal, ideal world that's like heaven. And from a Nietzschean perspective, Christianity is essentially just a religi religified version of Plato's philosophical idealism, and that's derived from Socrates, and that's where it all went terribly wrong. It's been all downhill in uh, Western culture for Nietzsche, really, since um, the 4th century BC. Uh, he thinks the people who had it all right were the so-called pre-Socratic uh, philosophers, um, people like uh, the Epicureans, who uh, had a, a morality based entirely on uh, enjoyment, physical enjoyment of this life, of embrace of the sensations and possibilities of this life. They were not otherworldly at all. Uh, Nietzsche's job was as a philologist looking at uh, ancient Greek texts. Now he was working in the, towards the end of the 19th century and this was a great age of rediscovery of pre-Socratic uh, Greek texts which um, perhaps to some extent have been suppressed during the...